All right, so we are here in Las Vegas right now, uh, right on the strip, and we are getting ready to head out to Lone Pine, California, which is where Mount Whitney is, and that's where we're headed this weekend. So we have 121 miles, uh, hour and 53 minutes right now to Beatty, Nevada, which I've been to before. That's the one with the donkeys. <laughs> it's kind of funny. They're just donkeys just randomly roaming around the town. Um, but yeah, so we're headed up there. So just under two hours, we'll charge up there. It says for, what does it say? For 20 minutes, we'll charge up again when we get there. The campground where we're going is somewhere right over here in the Alabama Hills area. So it's only about 20 minutes west of the supercharger, which is great. Then I can just run back to town, grab groceries if I need anything and uh, and top off. And we should be there later this afternoon. Should be a total trip of, I think around four, four and a half hours. So not too bad at all. All right, let's get on the road. Also just wanted to show on the uh, current drive right now, getting about 368 watt hours per mile. I know a few people have asked uh, to talk about that a little bit more when I'm charging. Um, I've driven 64 miles and uh, used 24 kilowatt hours and again getting 369 watt hours per mile. So not bad at all, especially with the cargo box in the back. Um, that is way better than what I was getting with the uh, Yakima rooftop cargo box so yeah I'm pretty uh, pretty excited about that oh there's a there's a few of them hold on wouldn't be a trip road trip to Beatty without seeing some donkeys right <laughs> There you go. Oh, there's two of them, just no or three of them. Left onto South First Street. Yeah, just walking down the street. All right, chill's over. Time to go charge. All right, just arriving at the BD Nevada Supercharger. All right, so just arrived at the BD Supercharger here in Nevada. We have eight stalls at 150 kilowatt max. And our next stop is gonna be Lone Pine, California. We did arrive with 13%. It said, I think it estimated 18%, so just a little worse. Let's look at, it's showing uh, since our last charge, showing around 355 watt hours per mile, um, which isn't too bad, especially with the uh, cargo box in the back. All right, so next stop though is gonna be Lone Pine, California. It says we need to charge for 20 minutes and then we'll be set to go. And then Lone Pine, there's another supercharger there, and you can hear where it shows the Sequoia National Park. Uh, we're kind of camping right in between right there. It does show it's about two and a half hour drive till uh, Lone Pine, so we're gonna get a good charge here. I'm gonna run inside, hit the bathroom, and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. All right, let's go get charged up. No problems with the uh, cargo box here in the back. You can see most of the stalls here, um, they're open. Every once in a while, I'll find like there's a bush or something like that when you're backing up, but most of the time, no issues at all. And right before I run to the bathroom, I did notice already up to 141 kilowatts coming in. And again, 20 minutes to continue. All right, so on the way to the bathroom, they do have some slow level two charge points. 
Those would take forever, so they're not even worth it. And then, of course, they're a fast charger. Out of service. Not surprising. Greetings, salutations. Thanks for joining me for another video. This weekend, we definitely have a fun one as we are headed to the Mount Whitney area in California. I'm gonna be camping in specifically what's called the Alabama Hills area. It looks amazing and I cannot wait to get there. Plan to do a little hiking, of course, a little cooking at the campsite and just plan to explore the whole area around there as the weather isn't gonna be too bad. So I think it'll be good enough to at least get out for some hiking and get outdoors a little bit. So the place I'm gonna be camping at is dispersed camping on BLM land, that's Bureau of Land Management. Here in the US, that basically means it's public federal land and anybody can camp on there. Sometimes there's a charge, but usually it's free. And you might ask, well, how did I find this place? And this place in particular has like 75 or 100 reviews and it's four and a half stars. So I'm really excited to check it out. Now you might ask, how did you come across that? How did you find it? The answer is the app called The Dirt, but more on that later in the video. All right, so I've been here about 10 minutes, says I have 10 minutes to go before I can continue my trip. Says we are 123 miles away, two hours and 21 minutes roughly, and we are headed to the Lone Pine California Supercharger. And from there, the Alabama Hills Recreation Area is just about 15, 20 minutes west of there. There is a little town there in Lone Pine, so there's gonna be a grocery store, obviously the Supercharger, and if I need to get firewood or anything like that, I should be able to pick it up there. All right, let me show you the map here and I'll show you exactly where we're headed. All right, so we are right here in Beatty, Nevada, and then we're gonna head through Death Valley National Park area over to the Lone Pine California Supercharger. Again, 123 miles, two hours and 20 minutes. It says 10 minutes to continue, like I just mentioned. And yeah, we should be in, like it says, probably around a little before three o'clock. All right, I'll check in with you one more time before taking off. So I'm gonna go get unhooked and then, yeah, two hours and 20 minutes to Lone Pine, to the supercharger there, which is right next to Mount Whitney. All right, so let's go to charging. That was expensive. <laughs> That's one of the more expensive ones I've had in a while. So $20.50. All right, I will see you in Lone Pine, California at the supercharger there. Also forgot to mention, it says we will arrive at Lone Pine Supercharger in California with 37%. Let's see how accurate that is. All right, so far this drive has been incredible. This is when I love driving, when I'm actually like out winding roads through the mountains, things like that. That's what I really enjoy. I haven't seen any cars behind me for probably a good hour, which is amazing. Very relaxing, that's for sure. Just taking in the scenery and just enjoying the drive. Looks like we have just over one hour to Lone Pine, California and Mount Whitney. I just had to stop, take a few photos, but look at this like backdrop. This is like insane. It's like perfect weather. It's like 55, 60 degrees out and just absolutely gorgeous. I'm in California, about 45 minutes from Lone Pine Supercharger and I just had to stop. All right, so just getting into the Lone Pine area here in California. The views are just spectacular. So you got the pretty
preconditioning going to warm up the battery for more efficient and faster supercharging. In 500 feet, turn left, then you will arrive at your destination. All right, so arrived here at the Lone Pine California Supercharger. It is eight stalls at uh, up to 250 kilowatt max. We arrived with 26%. It said we were gonna arrive with 37%, so a little bit less. Since the last charge, we got 294 watt hours per mile, so not bad. Yeah, some of that driving was absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm gonna get charged up and we'll catch up with you in one minute. All right, this is a high usage supercharger, but we're going to go ahead and move this all the way to 100% anyways. I need a little bit extra charge for when I'm looking for the campground and being able to explore a little bit as well as keep camp mode on throughout the night and not have to worry at all about uh, coming back to charge. All right, so I'm not exactly sure how much I'm gonna charge. We're up to 29%. I'm probably gonna let it go up to, yeah, maybe like 85% and then we'll take off. All right, so... We've got some people over here waiting. So I'm gonna actually unhook since I'm up to 79%. That'll be good. Let them charge and uh, let's go unhook. It's already 340 so I think it's time we find a campsite pretty quick and then um, get set up and then tomorrow I'll run into town and grab something a little more elaborate for dinner oh yeah and let's take a look at the charge here in Lone Pine that was $16.80 So just getting here to the Tuttle Creek Recreation Site. Decided to end up staying here. Um, it is $10 per night, but I found a spot right across from a restroom. And since it's getting dark, it kind of just makes sense to set up camp quick here for tonight. And then I'll probably look for somewhere else tomorrow. All right, so finally got here to the campsite. Pretty amazing views. Show you around real quick. I tried to get two things set up right away, my bed and Starlink. So got a little fire pit, got some wood for that. And then on this side, just all mountains. All right, let's get set up. All right, so I did want to break into the video for just one minute to talk about one of the biggest questions I get asked in a lot of my camping videos. And that question is, how do I find campgrounds that I'm staying at? And how do I know if they're on BLM land? If you're not familiar here in the US, we have what's called the Bureau of Land Management, BLM land. That's basically public land that's federally owned. And especially here out west in the United States, you'll be able to camp there for usually free on dispersed camping or sometimes for a small fee if there's amenities like vaulted toilets, things like that. Well, the answer is an app called The Dirt, specifically The Dirt Pro. The Dirt Pro costs $36 a year, and currently there's a seven day free trial. This is an app I literally use every single time I go camping. It includes offline maps, BLM overlays, which is super important, and 
discount set up to 40% at over a thousand campgrounds. This allows you to see what campgrounds are near you by using your location or campgrounds are along your route. See what cell service is there, the price, or if it's free, and even discounts up to 40% at over a thousand campgrounds across the US. Get your seven day free trial at the link down in the description below. All right, now let's get back to the adventure. All right, so there are a few things I need to do right away. First and foremost, I need to set up camp mode. Now that I'm here, I wanna go ahead and turn that on so that keeps my fridge freezer running the whole time. Let's go ahead and click on the temperature controls. Go over here and click camp mode. You can see camp mode is enabled. Car will stay on until battery reaches 20%. I have 66%. We'll see what it is tomorrow. I've noticed usually when I've camped over the last like 18 months, it's usually about 1% per hour. So we'll see if that uh, stays true. The next two things I need to do, which I need to take care of right away before it gets dark, is I need to set up the mattress from XPED here in the back. And then I also need to set up Starlink. I haven't used Starlink since fall of last year. I ended up pausing it because I wasn't really traveling too much during the holidays. I was just in Nashville. And so I decided, well, I'm just paused it for a couple months. Um, so there's probably some updates and everything on there I got to do, but I'm going to get that set up here in a minute as well. All right, actually to make things a little easier for me to set everything up here, get uh, the campsite all ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead, swing this out. It'll just make it a lot easier. Okay, then you're just gonna pull out here. That's it. There you go, and you can see that's locked in there. Now, I got free access to everything in here, and of course can cook over on this side if I need to. Um, I do have a table over there with the fire pit, but for at least now, I'll probably set up a few things on top here in a minute. All right, so let's open this bad boy up. All right, you can see everything. Now, I don't really need a lot of cooking stuff tonight. Go ahead and take this out so I can use this later. Little LED lantern. See, I got the back cleared out. Got the fridge all rearranged and everything. So all set to go there. Love having it down here. Again, just put little spacers on the side here. That gives it just enough air. All right, so got the XPED Mega Mat Auto all laid out and it's self-inflating right now it should just take about five minutes and then once that's kind of almost done then I'll use this uh, little air pump right here and I'll just put that in there and turn that on and it should take about 10 seconds <laughs> and yeah this thing is one of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept on for like camping and it's uh, it's it's just incredible so definitely pick one up but there will be a link in the description All right, so got the bed made. Uh, yeah, we're all set. Got a little light up here. Turn that on. Time to set up Starlink. There we go. Oops. Of course, I have Jackery here. Let's see how much I got. All right, 81%. That'll work. Of course, I can just plug it into the car if I need to, and that'll charge right up. What I like to do, though, is typically put my Jackery right here. That way, I can plug everything in that I need to, uh, charge all my devices and stuff like that, and it's right there. You have to check every bulb. Whoops. Got a little knot here. You work on that. It's plugged into the AC right there. I just need to turn it on. 
I also have this cord right here, which I'll plug into the front 12 volt, and that'll keep the Jackery topped off at 100%. It'll take it up to 100 and then top it off there. And it'll just pull from the big 75 kilowatt battery of the Tesla. See the Starlink is now moving. It's finding the current satellite, which should not have a hard time doing considering <laughs> it's basically just a crystal clear night on the bottom of the mountains here. We'll have a link to these in the description as well. I love them because you don't need any suction cups. They just formed the window. At least all the ones except for the panorama roof. Those you need suction cups. I don't use those anyways. I have a different solution. But when I'm out here camping, I don't even worry about that. All right, so as you can see, I got everything up on the windows. The Evanex window shades, uh, link in the description for those as well. Um, they're incredible. I've been using them for over a year now. But uh, all nice and cozy on the inside. I'm actually editing, or I'm get about to edit. I'm sitting up in front right now. Um, right now, just watching a little YouTube. Uh, I got Starlink set up in the back. And uh, just, yeah, just relaxing for a little bit. Um, it got dark really quick, right, kind of right after I got here. I was lucky enough to get the bed set up and Starlink set up, which I had to unpause. And that took about 20, 25 minutes uh, to reactivate it. But everything's working now. Sitting inside, it's pretty chilly out. It's like 35 degrees or so outside. Um, I do have a bathroom, like I said earlier, right across the road take me 10 seconds to walk there if I need to. Obviously as a guy, I just go outside right here for the most part. But uh, yeah, everything is, eh, you can't really see in the back right now, but just have the bed back there and the Jackery on this side. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna edit the rest of the night, probably till about mm, maybe around 11 and then get a good night's rest. Tomorrow, I probably won't hike until it gets a little bit warmer out, maybe around 11. Probably gonna head to Mount Whitney either tomorrow or Sunday, uh, but I will let you guys know. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the morning. Yeah, you can see it's actually quite cozy in here right now. 3.40 in the morning. <laughs> I fell asleep at like nine o'clock last night and woke up around three and been up a little bit since. So just watching a little YouTube right now, trying to get back to bed. Um, sun should be up, I'm guessing around 6.37. Hopefully at least get a couple more hours sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Just got up, you can see I did not put anything up top here. Um, when I'm camping, I usually don't. I usually get up fairly early anyways. All in all, good night's rest. Turn the camera around. A Jackery, which I've actually kept the Starlink on all night. Typically I wouldn't need to do that, but because I ended up waking up during the night, I just left it on. Um, see it's drawing, uh, yeah, between 70, and 125 watts. Currently the car, it's plugged into the car right here, into the 12 volts in the, uh, in the front. It's currently adding about 100 watts. And so, you gotta remember, so the car is, is powering 100 watts with this, uh, which is also charging my MacBook Pro, was charging my Apple Watch, I did have my phone plugged into it earlier a little bit. Um, yep, right here. That was plugged in. And then, uh, what else? Um, of course, my refrigerator is beneath me, beneath my feet over here. And so that's also been plugged in. And uh, of course, just keeping the inside, you know, at 72 degrees. So all of that 
Um, the battery on the car is at 44%. When I got here at 5 p.m. yesterday, it was at 66%. So, 22%. Uh, typically in 12 hours, it would be around 12%. Uh, maybe maybe just slightly over that, maybe 13 or 14. And uh, I think a combination of charging all of these things plus it being 30 degrees out uh, ended up using 22% in that time. So I will go top off today at some point uh, at the supercharger and get it back up to like 80, 85%. All right, let's uh, see what it looks like outside. Oh yeah, <laughs> quite the view. Let's see what's this way. You can see my Starlink right there, sitting on top of the Exo swing base. It's swung open right now. Oh, you got the sun right there. <laughs> but uh, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna get going here probably go do a little bit of hiking this afternoon we'll see how the day goes and i think it's supposed to get colder than i thought i'm gonna have to take advantage of whenever the sun is the warmest this afternoon and get out and go for a little hike then all right i'll catch up with you guys in a bit all right and i know some of you probably want to see i put up the window shades all right so these are from a company called evanex and or ev annex whichever way i've actually asked them and they said you can, it's kind of a running joke. You can say it either way. There's two sides to the ones that I have. There's a black side and a gold side. Uh, they also sell a silver and white, but I wanted the one with black so that I could stealth camp. Sometimes like at hotel parking lots or sometimes in city centers when I'm there. So, or I've done, or casinos like I've done before. But in this case, they usually sell them with these like there's little suction cup holes throughout but you don't even need the suction cups for any of the ones except for the panoramic rooftop i don't even use those because they don't work very well so i just use all the other ones and then i ended up buying a solution for the top that's just like a black kind of folds out and then just sticks up there with some clips when i'm out camping like this and I'm out in the wilderness, I don't even use the top. I'm up by the time that the sun comes up uh, high enough to even come in here. So, uh, but yeah, this has a gold and a black side. Um, I ended up just using black Gorilla Tape and just covering up each of the holes. I did that on all of the windows. So now if I want to stealth camp, I can just use the black side. If I want to keep the sun out, you know, like during the summer and reflect, then I'll use the gold side. So let's say, let's say I want to use the black side since that's what I have in my hand right here. So like I did last night actually. So I'll just take it and then you just... The rigidity of it kind of just forms to the window. So there's nothing else to do. You literally just pop it in place and that's it. And they have them for, even for like the little windows right here. Um, and they just takes one second, just pops into place. And like I have one back here. And then of course, for the front windows as well. And you know, nothing else needed, just pop them on. I will put a link down in the description below to all of these and to actually everything that I use. You'll, you'll always find it down in the description of each video. And uh, yeah, EvanX did a really, really, really good job with all of the windows outside of the panoramic sunroof. So for all the front, back, and side windows, you cannot beat the Evanex window shades. Just got up, opened the back door. Let's see, I got the Starlink just sitting on the swing base right here. Hard to beat these views. All right, so before we do anything else, I think it's time to cook some breakfast. Today we're gonna to be making pretty traditional, just eggs and hash browns. And so I'm gonna get everything set up here and I'll take you along for the ride. 
All right, so we're all set up here, ready to cook. So let's get into the fridge here. Turn it up a little bit, get it going. And that should warm up in a minute. All right, let's grab the eggs and hash browns out of the cooler here. Should say electric fridge and freezer, but I only use it as a fridge. A little bit of butter too. Put some olive oil in. Yeah, that helps. Hopefully get them a little crispy on one side. Put that back in the fridge. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. I'm gonna put the top back on just to trap a little of the heat in. Can't forget a little salt and pepper on the eggs. I'm just gonna do them like sunny side up. Some people call it basted. I don't know, I'm gonna put the top on it. Give it about two minutes, should be done. All right, let's check it. There we go. Pretty much perfect. Oops. One egg. Two egg. Whoops, I'm almost dumping the hash browns. All right, let's eat. Looks like some clouds might be coming through there. Yeah, even down there, it's really, really cloudy. Yeah, so what do you guys think of the Exo Swing Base and Gear Locker? I'm loving it so far. I love the versatility, being able to cook on it and do stuff like that. You know, you can't carry the heaviest things in it, but that's okay, don't need to. Like I said earlier, things like golf clubs, tents, tripods, fishing gear, cooking gear, that's all I need it for. Well, hopefully it doesn't snow too much up there because that's the path that I need to take to get to Mount Whitney. It's right over that peak down there. But we'll head up there in a bit and hope that I can get to Lone Pine Lake because the pictures I've seen online so far look amazing. All right, well, that was good, obviously. Let's take a break for a little bit. I might lay down, take a little nap, and get ready for the hike this afternoon. All right, so I think it's time to go hit the hiking trails and see what else we can find around this area. Alright, so this is the Alabama Hills Recreation Area here in California, and just look at these views. Let's take a closer look. We're not doing that. Huh, the one in the very far back, right at that edge, right there. That's Mount Whitney. It's the highest mountain in the lower 48 in the United States. And we can't get to it. That's a bummer. I figured I'd just turn around, but that was quite a mistake. 
<laughs> a little rougher than I thought. All right, well, yeah, that's a bummer. I'm definitely not gonna try to go up that. That's for sure. All wheel drive or not. All right, so from my understanding, get out of the sun here. Right there, let me zoom in. Right there is Mount Whitney. Yeah, there's absolutely no way <laughs> I could go this, even all wheel drive, not even close. And plus, it literally says road closed. So while I'm sure there's some people that can, those people aren't me. Guy I talked to at my campground, the host did say, he's like, ah, are you sure you're gonna be able to make it up there? And I was like, I think so. And he was correct, I cannot. Pretty cool views though. This was supposed to be Lone Pine Lake was supposed to be a five mile, six mile round trip hike up to it. But you have to go through this way to get there. Definitely not going that way. I'm gonna try to look on the map later and figure out where else I could go tomorrow. All right, back to the campsite where I'm gonna be doing a live stream. And uh, again, once you see this, it'll have already happened. But if you do go to my YouTube channel, there will be a section there now with live streams. So if you don't catch it when it's live, you can of course catch the recorded version and watch it there too. So I'm gonna go do that and I will see you guys later. All right, so thanks for joining me again for another episode. Had a great time today camping near Mount Whitney and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next travel quick tip or review video. Thanks for watching.